Good evening, everyone. Hi, Peter. How's it going? Come on in, come on in the class. If you need some extra time to get yourself ready, get your makeup ready for camera time, take your time. This is gonna be a very cool, simple class on tuning your intuition. Last week, we had a pretty cool class on this topic. And we did things such as work with the pendulum, muscle testing, kinesiology. I'm looking at my notes here from last week. Pretty cool stuff. Also, we did a meditation. So come on in, come on in the class when you are ready. This is an interactive class. Welcome, Peter. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Awesome. How you doing? We are doing awesome. Yes. Is your lovely lady with you? She is. Remind me her name. Joyce. Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Hi. How are you? How's it going? How are you, Joyce? Good. Oh, good. Awesome. Awesome. I didn't hear that. Cool. Well, last week I had we had a few more people. Seems like this week it's going to be the three of us. So it's going to be nice and short and sweet. You're welcome to turn your camera on and you're welcome to leave it off as well. It's up to you. So tell me, uh, Peter, you're telling me earlier today about um i shared with you about this class and you said you wanted to share it with joyce um tell me why why joining the class why do you want to participate in something like intuition tuning me or her or both both <laughs> she's already got it <laughs> of course if you can get closer to the mic, wherever the mic is, so that way I can. I have a lot of intuition. So I know things before they happen. I um, I can sense things beforehand. Um, I'm, I'm also a uh, empath. So um, they kind of all kind of go together for me anyway. Yeah. Wonderful. So we're here to, me and Peter are here to learn from you, Joyce. Oh, <laughs> I've been going with the flow since I was a kid. <laughs> it's that gut feeling. I go with it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, it's, that's, I, I'm the one that needs a class like this. That's why I started the class. Um, so I can hold myself accountable to, if I'm going to teach it, I'm going to be practicing as well. So it's very inspiring to hear your story, Joyce, because you've been going with the flow since you were a kid and you just said what, you know, could be like a recipe, like go with the flow. Yeah. 
Um, so a l I can share what I've been doing. I love to hear, uh, I don't know if for you it's unconsciously competence. And I don't know if you know exactly what it is that you do or who you are that allows you to be in the flow since you were a kid. I don't. I, and, and that's why I wanted to get into the class is because I, I don't know what I'm doing. It's just um, because I've been doing it so long, um, I need to fine tune it because as you become older, um, things get in the way. Um, emotions, um, what you feel towards other people get in the way. Um, all sorts of things get in the way of what you're feeling or your intuition. Um, you know, it's, or that gut feeling um, that you feel when you meet someone, whether, uh, yeah, yeah, your first impression. You know, like when I met Peter, the first thing I thought was, that's my soulmate. I'm supposed to be with him. Mm -hmm. um, and wonderful. Um, By the way, we both had that same experience. When I physically saw her and she turned around and looked at me, I went, wow. And that's, that doesn't happen. I've not anybody, I've never met anybody else who told me they met somebody and they went, wow, when they saw him, but I did with her and that was 19 years ago. And we knew we were supposed to be together. Um, and normally maybe I would have um, said, oh, no, you know, I'm with someone else. I should be with this other person, you know, disregard that gut feeling. Um, but anyway, sometimes other things get in the way, life gets in the way and you push your intuition aside and things turn out badly. <laughs> you know, um, you know, you're with the wrong person or in the wrong job or, um, you know, and intuition is as simple as, you know, maybe I'll take a different route home today. And then you find out, oh, there was this massive car wreck and I would have been in that. Mm. You know, um, and that happened to Peter and I. We had a new car and we decided you know, hey, let's stop and get something to eat. And it took us literally 10 minutes just to pick up a sub and we were back on our way. But longer than I wanted to. What's that? It took longer than I wanted to. I, I had made a commitment to be back in Orlando by nine. So 45 mm -hmm. minutes later, we're out on 192 and there's a car accident and people have been killed. A car didn't stop at 192 and crashed right into him. And we went to the police and said, when did that happen? They said 10 minutes ago. And that would have been us. Wow. Yeah. So why did we stop at Subway? We can't tell you. It was okay. just a feeling. We needed to stop. Did we have to? No. But, you know, that's part of intuition or a gut feeling you know, call it whatever you want it to call it, but that was one of the times we went with it, you know, um, and it's, I feel you should always go with your intuition. Yeah. Wonderful. You know, it's never wrong. <laughs> it's never wrong. Um, you know, those spidey senses, if you want to call them that, or um, you know, if you get a bad feeling about a place, no matter how inconvenient you think it's going to be to everybody else, get out of there. Yeah. Just leave. It, it's not right. You, you don't need to be there. Um, you know, too many people feel that, 
oh, well, I just got a bad feeling, but I, I didn't leave. And that's, you know, and then they tell you, oh, well, it was so horrible. My ex came in and we fought and, and if they had left, they would have never had that go on or, you know, whatever happens. Right. But, um, it's always best to go with your gut feeling, but we as adults, kids, they always go with it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they don't second guess themselves, you know, and mm. um. I don't know if you've ever followed Esther Hicks. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, if it feels good, that's, probably. that's, it probably is go with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I try to, to go by. If it's, um, you know, if it feels good, that's what I ought to be doing. Fernando. If you don't pay attention, we, Joyce and I are constantly talking about paying attention to stuff you can miss and don't miss. Mm. Uh, we are inherently lucky. And in saying that, by the way, we, you know, you've known us a long time. Just feeling inherently lucky adds to your potential. Um, just because if you think that way all the time, then you look for lucky events. We could go through thousands of them right now, one after another, big events, this house that we're in right this second. Uh, the farm, everything you could imagine was short periods of information, but paying attention, just thinking, well, what if something's here? And maybe that's it in and of itself is maybe there's something. So you get something, you're really not sure what it is. If you just stop for a second and go, maybe there's something here, you have a good chance of hearing it. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much. I've been taking so many, so many notes here and I want to welcome Liz, Lee, uh, Lisa to the call. Hi, Lisa. Hi. How are you? Good. Sorry for being late. It's all good. <laughs> Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Um, I want to introduce you to my friends, uh, Joyce and Peter. We met in Orlando years ago, uh, mm -hmm. over 10 years ago. And we reconnected earlier today on a phone call. And I told Peter about this class and... Here he is uh, joined by uh, his beloved Joyce and glad that you're joining too, Lisa. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, Lisa, uh, what's the, why did you want to, why are you here? What's your intention for this class? Um, I thought about it and my intention is to learn to understand when it's intuition and when it's fear. Because sometimes, um, I feel like I can think that it's intuition, but it's actually fears. I'm just scared to do something. And I, and I have a feeling that I shouldn't do it. So to divide those things. Okay, wonderful. So to learn or to understand when it's intuition and when it's fear. Yeah. Okay. And for you, Joyce, what's your goal? What's your intention? Um, just, hmm. you, you had said a little bit of it earlier when I asked just you about fine the, tune my, yeah. my ability. Yeah. Um, I've already, I'm trying to, to work with it more and more. I know I have it and I, I already, um, just to fine tune it more so that I, um, <laughs> I listen to it better. <laughs> Listen to it better. <laughs> Listen to it better. Wonderful. And Peter, what's your goal? What's your intention for today's class? Be more in the moment. It's hard to be in the moment when your brain's going 80 all day. Um, there's so many distractions in all of life, and it gets worse. I mean, if you consider everything that can take your attention anywhere from a phone in my van, I've got a CD player, a DVD player, Pandora. <laughs> It'll do probably every piece of technology you could have to interrupt your time. And I, when I lay in bed at night, I can actually hear a voice sporadically. And that's when I'm just by myself and the thoughts start to slow down. And the only time I don't hear them is when I'm spending time thinking. You, know, you just have to think. Is there anything, uh, Edgar Casey had a quote the other day and he said, 
Lord, what would thou hast me do? And then you pay attention. This is, this is exactly what we're talking about. And he said, just say those words and wait in whatever you hear. That's what is suggested for you. And I, I'd never heard that before. And I liked it. But it's if you're looking for some source of it, whether it's Lord or God or you know, Satan, somebody, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, what would thou hast me do? Now, that comes from a 90-year-old book, but he was uh, at 14,000 different readings with that type of information, and it worked out well for all the people involved. So paying attention is really hard for me. Okay. So what I heard you first say was hard to hear at first. It was to be in a moment? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. We okay. can't make our screen work, by the way. Joyce, you tried everything. She was a computer network administrator for the life of us. We haven't figured out what button we're missing. Oh, okay. For To turn the camera on? Yeah. 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 We've well, got easy cameras built into this thing. And it just isn't coming up. We want to. <laughs> huh. Um, we Do really you... don't, and the light's on coming out of the camera which is never oh, done before. Interesting. Yeah. On, your, on the left lower corner of your screen, do you see the mute button? Yeah. What's next to it? Stop video. Oh, so your video is quote unquote on. Yeah. We guess. Okay. Okay. Not so it's showing you, I, you know what? And you get, we don't, huh. well, it shows nothing on this screen right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get the video up, but it's not allowing me. Top right here. It there. says full screen. No, the three dots. Well, that's. Uh, well, okay. how about we, we're fine. How about, yeah, we're fine. Let's go with the flow. <laughs> Let, let's listen. <laughs> that's that's good. I My mind is making pictures with your voices. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll keep working on it. <laughs> Yeah. Lisa, how old are you? Me? That's not nice. Yeah. You never ask a woman how well, old she is. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm 19. I'm sorry, how old? 19. 19. 19. Okay. Have you had bouts of, of um, intuition in your life? I'm sorry? Uh, uh, what? Of the times you get intuition, you said sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Do you, have you noticed how you physically feel at that moment? Um, can you explain to me what is in, inter, in the, intuition? What, I'm sorry. Yeah. English is intuition not is term. what makes you decide to do something. Intuition is mm -hmm. feeling an impulse to do something based on something you feel. Does that sound mm -hmm. right, Fernando? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here, how about this, uh, Peter? Um, I'll let her answer your question. It's a great question. Before we get into it, how about we do a little bit of meditation because that's going to help us be in a moment. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do a little meditation, maybe five to 10 minutes. And in that meditation, we're going to do a forgiveness exercise very short one. And we also going to do a heart exercise. So let's go ahead and get comfy, close our eyes. I'm gonna take four deep breaths together to start the meditation. And when we exhale for the four deep breaths, we're gonna exhale, ha. So let's go ahead and take the first deep breath together.
continue to breathe normally. We'll be here for a few minutes. If you have a mantra or a prayer, you may start that now. And if you don't, I invite you to pay attention to the air around your face, around your hands, and the air coming in through your nose and out through your nose. going to start the forgiveness exercise. It's a very simple visualization. I'd like for you to invite someone that you feel you need to forgive. It can be someone that you interacted with today, yesterday, last week, last month, last year, last decade. And it, that person could also be you if you like to forgive yourself for something. If you're going to forgive yourself, I invite you to bring the picture to your mind's eye, the picture of the memory of you that you feel you need to forgive. If you're forgiving someone else, I'd like for you to bring the memory, the picture of the memory of that person into your mind's eye and make it bright, make it focused. And I'd like for you to imagine a healing light, a healing energy coming from up above into your head, down your spine, through your heart, shooting out through your chest into this picture, whether it's you or someone else. And notice as the light comes from above, it heals you, it heals your body, it heals your memories. And as you shoot that energy through your heart into that picture of the other person or of your that version of yourself you want to forgive, notice 
that picture healing notice the memory healing notice that person healing Now, I'd like for you to get closer to the picture that you just healed, whether it's the version of yourself from the past that you want to forgive, or that person, the memory of that person that did something that you feel you need to forgive. And notice their nose. Notice their eyes, notice their ears, and as you get a little bit closer to them, I'd like for you to start changing their nose to your nose, their eyes to your eyes, their ears to your ears their arms to your arms, their legs to your legs, until you completely change that picture of that memory into your present self. And notice that all forgiveness is self-forgiveness. allow any changes to take place any new connections to be made in your neurology to integrate this new change this new healing and now I'd like for you to Place your hand on your heart. Go ahead and find your heart above your chest and we're going to move to a different exercise. This is the heart meditation exercise. And this is gonna help us tune our intuition. So as you place your hand above your chest, find your heart beating. Take your time in finding your heart beating. It may help if you use your index finger and your middle finger from your right hand and press against your skin, against your ribs until you feel your heart beating. The work we're going to continue doing today is done at the heart level, meaning at an unconscious level, meaning at a parasympathetic level. The parasympathetic system is your system, is the body, is your part of your mind that keeps all of your body functioning without the conscious mind telling it to do anything. Your heart beats because of that parasympathetic system. And the work we're going to continue doing today will be for us to create a better relationship with that 
mind, that unconscious mind, that unconscious competent mind, that mind that keeps our heart beating, even before our birth, our heart was, was already beating. It's the same mind that does the digestion, helps our hair grow, our nails grow. The same mind that does the breathing for us. We're going to be connecting to that mind even more, even more deeply today. So that in the future, when you, in, when and if you come across times that you need to face challenges and grow, you can ask questions of this mind. This mind has kept you alive all these years. You can trust this mind. It has your best interest. It has done everything possible till this day to keep you alive. And you will keep doing it until you take your last breath. It's okay to completely trust this mind. Trust your heart. This mind is very sensitive. If it doesn't like something, it will let you know. Excellent. We're going to continue with the class today. We're going to do four deep breaths to come out of meditation. Let's take one deep breath together. Excellent. Move your toes, move your fingers. Start coming back to now into the room. Move your shoulders, move your head. Slowly open your eyes and come back into the room when you're ready. How was that? Good. Good, thank you. <laughs> How was the uh, forgiveness part? I've done um, that before. I was, um, I, um, I went through a whole thing of, because I had had a uh, frozen shoulder and I was holding all my anger in and it was manifesting in my shoulder. Mm. So, um, I had to go through a lot of, uh, releasing the, um, uh, the anger. <laughs> yeah. So I had a lot, a lineup of people I needed to forgive. <laughs> yeah. But it worked. And, um, believe it or not, my shoulder was 80% better after I went through the mantras in the first session. So when was yeah. that session? Um, July, Wonderful. I guess. Yeah. An old Reiki friend of mine from 30 years ago. 
somebody that I had a flashback about and I called him up and asked and I hadn't seen him in 30 years and we were friends on Facebook and I asked him to come out and that's what he did. Wow. That's the thing about not running into people is you don't know what they do while you're gone like you are right now. <laughs> yeah. Where were you one day for 10 years? Well, I was becoming a psychologist. You, said, you, know, you never know what people will do. Yes. Yeah, I never know. I that or surgery. And I said, you're not cutting on me. So um, let's try something different. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm fine. My have full range of motion, everything. I'm back to riding horses and jumping. And so I'm good. That's wonderful. Did you forgive anyone today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. How many people? Um, two, myself and one other. Okay. Wonderful. How about you, Peter? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, somebody specific in mind who, when I met him, he was a mechanic, but he was also a minister. And, uh, and he said I could trust him through and through. And at the end, I'm not sure how much money I'm out after having him work on three of my cars. It was bad. I, I was going to just bring, go to his house and, and this helped me go through this. Go to his house, write everything else. I don't have an argument with him and just have him read it. And when you said to do that, I decided I would do the same format. Go to his house, let him read it. And at the bottom line, it would say, and I forgive you and get up and walk away. And that actually helped. I mean, that's something... I'm so torqued at him. The money's gone and I'll replace the money. It's just that when you say you're a minister, um, it adds a whole different dynamic. You're hoping for trust. There isn't anybody that says you're a minister that doesn't want trust for some reason. And he's the third minister in a row. <laughs> that's uh, our old neighbor uh, was, was in Bitcoin and screwed countless people. And when he came over, he said, no, I'm a minister in seven different languages. But he ended up to be another one. But in any event, your thing, doing that right then, I, I pictured myself on the porch with a letter, handing it to him. And instead of me saying anything, the last few words be, and I forgive you, and just stand up and walk away. Don't wait for a response. I don't want to hear I'm sorry. Nothing will change because the terminology you use is interesting because I haven't heard it before or what you just did. And that was that, and I understand it inherently that you have to forgive yourself. Uh, because ultimately, I'm pissed off at myself for letting it happen. And I didn't think that until then, right? I mean, I, for whatever reason, either attracted to him into my life through law of attraction, because I've had two previous ministers that have worked on stuff. Um, and for whatever reason, you're always responsible due to the law of attraction. Uh, there's no circumstance that is happening to any of us that the law of attraction doesn't bring in. So it's hard at the end of the time to blame somebody when they're just a reflection of you. So that's an interesting exercise that really uh, brings up the point that it's not their fault. You brought them into your life and now you're mad at them. You think, but you know, you're know, you already worried that this is gonna happen, then it did happen, then you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you for sharing, Peter. How about you, Lisa? I was a little angry at myself today and when I looked at the picture of myself I realized that if it was someone else I wouldn't be mad because it was not a big deal and it just disappeared. Wow, wonderful. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Wonderful, so shall we go to the next phase of the class? Sure. Yeah. All right, let's do that. So the next phase of, of the class is, let's do some tuning. So who has done this type of uh, muscle testing right here? Yeah, me. Oh, yeah. One way you can do it and the other way you can. <laughs> uh, she says her dad. Is it like with a hand? What's that? Is it like with a hand, but with the fingers? Yeah, it's, it's oh. instead, of, instead of pushing down, someone yeah. pushing down, you do with the fingers. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm going to put a timer here. And we're going to do three minutes. 
of us um, calibrating our muscle testing. Right? So um, go ahead and test. Ask ask your ask yourself what my name is like what is my name and then answer the right give the right answer and then ask again what is my name and give it a wrong answer and then pull your fingers apart and notice that when you give a wrong answer your fingers are not as strong so you try to you try forcefully to actually pull those fingers apart uh for both questions and you're going to calibrate one question at a time when uh what is the correct answer and what is the wrong answer so let's go ahead and do that for it's actually the first one let's do for one, a minute uh does everyone understand the exercise yes yeah okay so go ahead and my name is fernando my name is Pedro. My name is Fernando. My name is Richard. My name is Fernando. My name is Louis. All right, how was that for you guys? Good, thank you. Did um did you notice that you needed to calibrate or it was ready to go from the beginning? I was ready to go. I think mine was okay. I haven't done that before that I remembered. Okay. How about you, Lisa? I didn't really get what you asked. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, I understand what we're, we're supposed to. What was the question? The question is, uh, do, did you, how was that exercise for you? Oh. Yeah, unless I overthink and I intentionally keep my fingers when I pronounce the wrong name. <laughs> so yeah, when I when I don't think, that works. <laughs> but when I think, I just start you know, keeping them tight and not letting. Excellent. That thanks for sharing that because that prompts me to share about the conscious mind versus the unconscious <laughs> conscious mind when it comes to processing information. So did you know that the parents, the, the unconscious mind, the mind that keeps your body running, um, can process 1 million, not 1, 11, 11 million bits of information per second. The unconscious mind can process, can capture, can record, a hundred, not a hundred, eleven, eleven million bits of information per second. In contrast, the conscious mind, can you guess how many bits of information it can process per second? Wild guess. Well, <laughs> what's that? I know the answer. 10,000? I don't know. One hundred. Wow. 100 bits of information per second, the conscious mind. If you ever had the privilege of watching the that um, video called the gorilla video, you know what I'm talking about. Meaning the conscious mind cannot possibly <clears throat> remember or process everything that's around us. It has to do three things. It has to, it has to delete. It has to distort. It has to generalize. So if you're driving, or if you are in, 
in a garden or if you're sitting right now in front of the computer, the conscious, your conscious mind has to delete, distort, generalize everything that's coming at you as far as energy, as far as colors, uh, objects, data, sounds. It has to delete, distort, and generalize. However, the unconscious mind can actually record, it can process 1 million bits of information per second. One million, 11 million. So when we do meditation, what happens to the conscious mind is it goes to sleep. And it allows the unconscious mind to awaken so that if we do any type of work, we're using a mind that's a lot more powerful. How does that tie into the intuition? Is that when you, when you want to work on your intuition or ask questions of your unconscious mind, which has been recording 11 million bits of information per second since, your, since inception and perhaps even before this lifetime, wouldn't you want to ask that mind to help you with work, with decisions versus the conscious mind that has to, the mini computer, I call it the mini computer versus the, the huge computer or the supercomputer. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. So that's why uh, sometimes if you ever done past life regression or forensic regression, which sometimes in law enforcement, more and more they do forensic uh, regression to, um, to help find clues and signs and hints to solve crimes or solve problems. The therapist do, guiding the session is helping the person calm the conscious mind, the commentator mind, the monkey mind, so that all the 11 million bits of information per second that was recorded of the person that was at, at the time of whatever happened, happened, that person can actually recall, okay, here's the tag number of the car or here's what the person looked like. It's an unconscious process. The conscious mind cannot possibly, it cannot possibly do deal with those challenges or problems or recall those things. So today can be the, the day where you make a promise to yourself to create a better relationship with your unconscious mind because you've been here on this planet for a, a many years now and that mind has a lot of information stored <laughs> right so let's uh let's continue with the, the exercise i'd like for you to um we have 10 minutes so we have 10 minutes we're going to be very um Intentional about this 10 minutes, going to be the te best 10 minutes of this class. And I'd like for you to write down one problem that you want the answer to. Or you may call it something else. One thing that if you have that answer, it will improve life tremendously. So go ahead and write it down or type it somewhere. It should be about the past or about the future? Um, like, if you want an answer, if you want your intuition to give you an answer, um, an answer that if you got a clear answer, it will allow you to accomplish something that you've been wanting to accomplish for a long time. Yeah, but I mean, 
Is it like something I don't know, but I wish I knew about what happened in the past or something yeah, about the past? If you if the answer to that question would mm -hmm. allow you to have a big impact on your present mm -hmm. and how you act in your life, then yeah. Okay, but can it be about the future? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. And if we have time, we do both. We do, yeah, we do two. So pick one for this exercise. And does everyone have your questions? Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So I'm writing my mind down as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, get into our meditative state. We're going to get to our unconscious mind even more awakened. Let's get connected to our unconscious mind. So let's close our eyes, start paying attention to our breathing. Oh. Relax our feet, relax our hands. Relax our shoulders. Now I'd like for you to bring to your mind's eye that question. And notice anything I think the dog's noticing something. <laughs> He's saying something. <laughs> she really wants attention. She doesn't normally. She knows something's up and she's losing her mind, touching us, rubbing us, nosing us. <laughs> and something's up. Good. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Try to relax as just like those, just like Peter's dog might be relaxed right now. If it helps for you to get connected to your unconscious mind, you can use your index finger and your middle finger and find your heart beating. Notice that your conscious mind is not directing your heart. And you can ask that mind, what is the answer to this question? For my highest good, dear heart, dear unconscious mind, you've kept me alive all these years. For my highest good, what is the answer to this question? Is it for my highest good to have the answer now? Yes or no? Is there a better question for me to ask? Yes or no? There's no wrong or right way to doing this. This is an art. This is a relationship that you get to build with your unconscious mind. The questions I'm giving you are simply prompts. You can create your own prompts. What is the answer to the question? Is it for my highest good to have the answer today? Yes or no? Is there a better question I can ask? Yes or no?
excellent start coming back to now when you're ready coming back to now into the room moving your toes moving your hands your fingers your shoulders back into now back into the room slowly open your eyes Go ahead and look at your question and write down any answer that you got. Who would like to share? Um, my question or was, um, should I pursue buying a horse? Because we sold our farm, as you know, a year ago. And um, my horses, I had put down several months prior to us moving. I say several months, uh, probably four months or five. Um, one, they were old and um, they couldn't, it was time. Um, but um, I have gotten back into riding and I have been looking at horses to buy. Um, but with the economy, um, it's been all over the place. The prices are, it's like buying a car. Mm. I mean, literally like buying a car, the prices. Yeah. Um, and it should, there's no reason for it, none. And so um, all these horses have been coming around um, and my trainer has been showing them to me and I'm just, um, using my intuition and, and kind of, no, he's not the one, he's not the one. Um, and so my question was, should I continue to pursue buying a horse or should I just not do that anymore? You know, just look at maybe leasing or something else. And it told me to wait, mm. um, just wait. So I'm hoping that with the economy in how it is, that maybe by waiting, um, prices will go down and I'm going to let the universe play out and the right horse will come when it's supposed to. And I'm not going to push, I'm going to wait. Just like it asks, <laughs> which <Wonderful>. is very difficult. <laughs> 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 you know, the, the, the little girl that says, I want it now, 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 now. <laughs> because it, it's hard when, um, and I think this analogy everybody can kind of relate to. It's like borrowing your neighbor's car. It's there in their driveway, but it's still your neighbor's car and you have to clean it every time you use it and you have, you know, and they're still borrow using it, but it's still their car. And so it's difficult when you go to a barn and you're using someone else's horse or a lesson horse. It's not yours. So, um, you know, you see someone else riding it and you get attached to these animals because they are animals and they have souls and they have feelings and they have emotions. And, um, you know, I, I get invested in animals. 
Yeah. And so I've, um, you know, I, it, it's just tough. So yeah. I want to be able to go to the barn and ride my horse and not someone else's. And, um, and so when you say, when you say it's tough, what emotions are present? Um, well, it's, it's like, I don't, I can't make any decisions for that animal. You know, if I see something that's, um, you know, like for instance, the, the horse that I've been riding, his fly sheet was all ripped up and torn up. I did buy him a new one, but that's not my job to buy that horse stuff, you know, because yeah. he's not mine. I ride him, but, you know, that's his owner's job to buy him his things. Yeah. You know, um, it's just like, you know, and, and um, I do the best I can while I'm there. Um, but, you know, um, I can't go out to the barn every day and groom him and, you know, if he has a boo-boo on his leg and go out and take care of it every day and make sure it gets better, <laughs> yeah. you know, stuff like that. It's because he's not mine. Yeah. So, you okay. know. But if he goes lame and she has a $5,000 horse bill, then there's that. There's, there's <laughs> yeah. both ends of the yeah. financial and, obligation. And you've been out at our old place. I mean, I had three horses and, you know, I'm used to having my own and yeah. I always had a horse to ride. So it's very difficult for me to not, not have a horse that if I want to ride, I can go out and, and ride. Or if I just want to go to the barn and groom, I can, you know, it, it's very therapeutic. Um, yeah. You know, some people like pulling weeds and gardening and, um, you know, everybody has their thing that makes, brings them joy. Um, and that's mm -hmm. what the horses do for me. I go out there and um, if I'm having a rough day, I go out and I just groom and bathe the horse and talk to them and, you know, they just listen and they're enjoying the the massage and stuff like that. And yeah. I'm, I, I'm not one of those girls that go out and shop and, or go to the bar and bar hop or anything like that. I'll go to the barn and groom the horse, you know? Right. That's my therapy. <laughs> yeah. Well, while uh, there's not maybe, you know, 12 birthday bars around Orlando, <laughs> That might change if there are, you know, tons of that, birthday bars popping up. Well, that is that true. Is a question, by the way, and I'll make it short. I, I originally, when you said that, I thought, should I open the birthday bar? And I changed the question should, to, should I be part of opening the birthday bar? And the answer is yes. And I can do that. I, I have tons of friends with money. We could, we could afford to do it. But I, it, like two of the people you want to do it with have owned bars. So, and they're willing to probably put up three or 400,000 each. And we would probably wouldn't have to put up anything, make 10% of the whole thing. So your um, thinking or what you asked me to do and changing just one word, what I could be part of, not, not own, make just like what Joyce is thinking about. Do I need to own the horse or do I need to just have access to it? And if I can have access to Barb with no liability, and that's what she's got right now. It's the same dynamic that I want the benefit of owning it without owning it. Mm. And that's what she wants, is the benefit of the horse to do whatever she wants with it without owning it. And uh, and that's probably all possible too. There's probably people out there that would want her to watch your horse. But. So I got my answer, thank you. You're welcome, you're very <laughs> welcome. How about you, Lisa? Well, first I throw down one question, and then when you ask, are you sure? You want to know the answer? I understood that I didn't want to know <laughs> the answer. And then I asked another one. And uh, I wasn't sure either because there is, um, I don't think there is anything that I really want to know. I'm satisfied with 
my life and everything. But I got some, like some pictures, like a little movie about the question that I asked the second time. So I guess that was the answer. Wow. <laughs> Wonderful. That's excellent. That that's the first time I've heard anything like that. That's wonderful. Cool. We've gone over about eight minutes. Please forgive me. Uh, if anyone would be thinking, uh, considering attending this class, what would you tell them, Joyce? Um, to attend. <laughs> okay. How about you, Peter? What you did is thought provoking. And if you're going to help people, you have to get them into this mind. You've got them to solve their own problems. And these uh, steps that you've just had us go through, even though you know I'm an information junkie, 50,000 hours I've spent on the low side, maybe 60. And I hadn't heard three of the things that you did today. So that was a good thing. It wasn't Oh, you know, I've tried that 13 times and it hasn't worked. So I did like what you did because it's something new and something um, that works. Awesome. Thank you. How about you? How about you, Lisa? What would you tell someone who is thinking about attending this class? Yeah, I would also tell them to attend. And that uh, intuition uh, is something we can also work on. Yeah. It's not like it's given or it's not. We can develop it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you. thank you, Peter. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Lisa. This has been a, an mm -hmm. honor to co-create this time with you. I've learned a lot. It, I participated in the exercises as well. And if uh, you know anyone who wants to be part of this, please send the same, same link that you used, send it to them so they can attend. Um, I have other classes as well on releasing limiting beliefs, emotions that are less than positive, and those classes are on the calendar list as well. So thank you for your time. Thank I'm you. gonna thank you. Thank yeah, you. You're, you're very welcome. I'm we gonna work play... on our video. <laughs> yeah, work on the video. And I'm gonna I'm gonna play a song so as we get out of the of this class, we get some movement going. And as we get some movement going, we get the integration to be even more powerful. So feel free to leave whenever you want. I'll leave the music playing for about three minutes.